because it gives a voice where there wasn't a voice before. You know, I think a lot of times people talk about, um, I was actually, a friend of mine is up at Penn State and was writing a paper on the ADA and asked about why the disability movement w took so long to get moving as opposed to the civil rights movement and the women's rights movement. We were locked up. We had laws that said that if you went out on the street and you had a physical disability, or a disability that made itself apparent in any way, shape, or form, they could throw you in jail for being ugly. There's a lot of ugly people in this world, and we're not throwing them in jail. But if you had a disability, they, it was legal for them to take you away from your family and friends out of the home that you've been raised in and lock you up. That's a huge injustice, yet we don't talk about it. You know, why is it important to invest in that? Because people need to know that. Just as people need to know about the Holocaust. You know, if there wasn't money put in to Holocaust projects, you think it would be taught in K-12 through public schools? No. Oh, there was this thing, it was called the Holocaust, it killed a lot of people. The end. We've killed a lot of people with disabilities in this country. The Nazis learned eugenics from American doctors. They sent doctors here to learn how to experiment on people with disabilities, to learn how to stretch little people, to learn how to do all kinds of whacked stuff to people with CP, to learn how the torture techniques that we're using today on people in Iraq are the same torture techniques that were used on people with mental and physical health disabilities during the eugenics movement. You know, let's see what it's like if we, you know, tap up tap a, or tape a lot of electrodes to somebody's head and run an electrical current to someone with schizophrenia. Oh, for shits and giggles. You know, that needs to get out there. That, you know, I think Katrina really shed light on, on the state of people down, the state of life for people down in, in New Orleans. You know, and Spike Lee's documentary did a bang up job of that. You know, why don't we have the same thing around people with disabilities? And it's still going on. We still have people locked up. We still have kids graduating high school and not getting jobs. We still have kids graduating and staying on Social Security. Why? Because 90% of these kids have never seen somebody successful with a disability, have never been exposed to somebody successful with a disability. Now let's take the top five black celebrities and take them off TV. Goodbye, Oprah. I personally enjoy that, no offense. You know, bye, Denzel Washington by Bill Cosby, you know, goodbye Morgan Freeman, um, goodbye Halle Berry. And what have you done? You don't have Monsters Ball, which won Halle Berry the Oscar. You don't have The Color Purple. You don't have Malcolm X. You don't have Glory or Shawshank Redemption. You know, look at what you've done. What, you know, let's take out the top five, you know, Latina or African American writers and look at what a loss that would be. Imagine a world with no Maya Angelou. Imagine a world with no Alice Walker. Imagine a world with no Cesar Chavez. Can you imagine that world? What a lack of role models that would be for young people of color. Yet that's the world that kids with disabilities have been raised in. We haven't been taught about Ed Roberts. We haven't been taught about Justin Darn. We haven't been taught that there's a minimum of five presidents with disabilities in this country. We haven't been taught any of that. We haven't been taught that people have died for the rights of us to, for the right for me to be able to go to school. You know, we didn't know that our people have thrown each other out of wheelchairs and climbed up the steps of the Supreme Court to protest the fact that they want to say that courthouses don't want to have to be accessible to people with disabilities. That tells me right there, justice is not only blind, but justice, is, justice doesn't have a ramp. Justice is inaccessible. You know, what did the Statue of Liberty say? It didn't say, bring me your rich. Bring me your rich, your white, your, your happy-go-lucky, upper-middle-class, yuppie minivan driving masses. It didn't. That's not what the principles of the country were founded on. Yet here's a huge population that have been unempowered their entire lives you know, and that have been locked up. You know, I think of when my mom went to vocational rehab after my dad became paralyzed when I was a year and a half. And she went to VR and said, you know, my husband just became paralyzed. 
I need some job training services. Can you help me? And they said, we'll help you if you put your daughter up for adoption. And my mom said, over my dead, writhing body. But you think of how many people that wasn't an option. How many people probably did things like that? You know, I think about friends of mine that, you know, were put up for adoption because their parents didn't know what to do with them. Some of whom were adopted into great families, some of whom were still in the foster care system, having a hell of a time. That's why you need to invest in things like this, to, to change that perception. You know, if Andy and Parado talking about something that makes an impact to a five-year-old with cerebral palsy, 20 years down the road, maybe that five-year-old will become the next Stephen Hawking. Maybe that five-year-old will become the next Andy Imperato, or the next Bill Clinton, or the next Spike Lee. That's why it's important to put a face on the discrimination of people with disabilities, to put a face on the oppression, to put a face on the leadership and the opportunities for change that are still out there today.